Hi everyone and welcome back to chapter 13, The Golden Rule. Daniel followed Mr Silver back through the streets of Paris. He wasn't entirely sure what Silver had done to the mugger in the alley, only that it had not been anything good. The look in Silver's eyes told him not to ask, not today. When they reached the Noah Emporium, Daniel's spirits lifted the moment he saw Ellie. She sat with her feet on Mr Silver's desk, flipping through the browning pages of a newspaper that might have been a hundred years old. When she looked up, her eyes flicked from her father to Daniel and back, and her face hardened. Had a good time, have we? she asked. Not really, no, said Silver, and he melted into his armchair. Ellie ruffled his hair. Papa, she said in a sickly sweet voice, you know my birthday's coming up. I want to talk to you about it. Mr Silver's eyes were shut. He was massaging his head. Can it wait? Oh, but it's my birthday, said Ellie. Silver opened one eye. Your birthday? She folded her arms. Didn't I just say that? It's next month, remember? I've had a few ideas about the ball this year. Silver reached into his pocket and brought out his book of wonders, stowing it away in the desk. Ellie, I've had a rotten morning. Can we please talk about this tomorrow? Ellie let her arms fall to her sides. Oh, it's always tomorrow, or the day after that, or next week. It's always later. While you're out and about with your new best friend, she pointed to Daniel, I'm stuck here every day and you can't even find five minutes to talk to me about my birthday. She stormed towards the curtain and disappeared. A moment later, she poked her head back into the shop and added, I hate you. Then she was gone. Silver scrambled up, knocking over an inkwell on his desk. He went after Ellie, leaving ripples spreading through the velvet curtain and black ink seeping across his desk. Daniel didn't know what to do. He was more certain than ever that Ellie must hate him and he could understand why. He had been brought to the Emporium to do what Ellie couldn't, to learn about magic and wonders and all the rest. He grabbed an old newspaper and began soaking up the spilled ink from Silver's desk. As he worked, something caught his eye. One of the drawers in the desk was open just a fraction. Daniel need, leaned to shut it, but a glint of light from within caused him to pause. Without knowing why, he opened the drawer. He felt a flutter in his chest. Inside the drawer was Mr Silver's Book of Wonders. In all the commotion with Ellie, Mr Silver hadn't locked the drawer. Daniel stared at the book. Anticipation began to build inside him. Ever since he'd written his first wonder, something had been playing on his mind. It seemed to him that anything was possible, that there were no limits to what the stroke of a pen could achieve inside these walls. And if that was the case, if anything was possible, then why couldn't he see his parents again? Mr Silver's warning echoed in his mind. If by some tiny chance you ever come across the book when you are alone, I must ask you that you do not write a single word in its pages, without me. Daniel tried to turn away, to close the drawer and forget about it, but he could not shake the notion that had gripped him. His heart ached to hold the book, to write in its pages, to open a door and see his parents' faces, faces that he could barely remember. He could almost feel their arms wrapping around him. And anyway, hadn't he been creating wonders of, wonders of his own for days and days, all of them perfect? Surely it wouldn't hurt to add another. A final glance at the curtain and Daniel snatched the book from its place in the drawer. He rested it with great care on the desk and turned to a blank page. He grabbed one of Mr Silver's fountain pens. He dipped the pen in what was left of the puddle of ink and lowered the shining nib to the page, hardly daring to wish or hope. The nib of the pen found the page and he began to write. Ten minutes later, Daniel was sweeping through the Emporium towards his new wonder. He hurried up a narrow staircase, turned a sharp corner into a passageway with a low ceiling. For a moment, he forgot to even breathe. The new door was just up ahead, but everything was very wrong. 
Something inside, something huge and angry, was banging and pounding on the door, straining to get out. The door juddered and shook. And as terrible as all of this was, as confused and scared as it made Daniel, the worst thing of all was not the possible beast behind the door. No, the very worst thing was that Mr Silver stood by the new door, arms folded, thunder grey eyes glaring down the corridor. In his hands, he held the Book of Wonders. What did you do? he asked. His voice was calm and low, which unsettled Daniel more than if he had yelled. The door rattled. A howl came from the creature beyond. In that moment, Daniel wished to be anywhere else, even back on the streets of Glasgow, running from Spud and his gang. I, I wanted to see my parents, he said, amazed he could still speak. Every day they get a bit further away, a bit harder to remember. When I picture them, they're sort of fuzzy round the edges, so I wrote a room where they're still alive. Silver's shoulders seemed to sag a little. He looked old and hunched. And then he straightened up and was himself again. Something battered the door with the force of a train. Daniel jumped back. Magic cannot bring back the dead, Daniel. And Silver, said Silver, and he began to flip through the book, stopping when he found the page on which this wonder had been written. The corridor trembled. There are certain borders that should not be crossed. The line between those living and those no longer with us is one of them. If we mess with that, we create cracks that allow all things beyond imagination to escape. He pointed to the door. Will it get out? said Daniel. If it did, we could all be in trouble, said Silver. He ripped the page from the book and at once the bricks around the doorway began to shift, closing in around the door, sliding and swivelling into place until the doorway was buried beneath the wall blank and clean. Then Silver held out his hand and the page just burst into flames. Daniel watched it curl and blacken and soon nothing but floating whispers of cinder. Silver wagged a finger at Daniel. If you had told me you wished to see your parents, he said, I might have been able to create an image from your memories, an echo of what has passed, but they would not have been real. Daniel nodded. You have failed the second test, said Silver, stowing the book away. Test, said Daniel. And then it came to him. Silver had left the drawer unlocked on purpose, giving Daniel access to the book. How could he have been so silly, so easily tempted? He wished that he could go back and change things, that he had left the book in its drawer. Everything was ruined. Are you going to sack me? he asked quietly. Silence. Silver stared at Daniel and Daniel seemed to be staring. Sorry, Silver stared at Daniel and seemed to be staring through him. What you did was dangerous, he said. What if I hadn't been watching? What if a custom had come along and opened that door? Do you understand what you've done? Not only have you disobeyed me, you've used the book selfishly and hurriedly. Daniel felt ashamed. I'm so sorry, he said, and to his surprise there were tears in his eyes, real tears. He took a breath and fought them back. If you want to drop me back in Glasgow, I understand, it's my own fault. I'm the one who ruined everything, but oh, I promise you I've learned my lesson. Silver let out a long, wheezing cough. He leaned against the wall until it stopped. I will give you one final chance, he said, and he held up a finger to silence Daniel's thanks. But you must be punished. You have a connection with the Book of Wonders. That much is obvious. I won't break that connection, but I will not permit you to write a single word in its pages until I feel you are ready. If you put even one foot out of place, you'll be gone. Daniel wanted to jump up and down. Instead, he pushed his relief and delight back down inside. Thanks, Mr Silver, he said. I promise I won't let you down. Silver raised an eyebrow and the lines around his eyes seemed to deepen. You had better not.
and we'll see what chapter 14 holds next time.